Hi friends, here is another tool that's very helpful for you to use in the classroom. When learning about history or historical events, you might want to use this new timeline creator from Adobe Spark. So if you will navigate yourself to spark.adobe.com or just uh, Google and search for Adobe Spark Timeline Creator, and it will take you right here, like right here where it says design your own timeline now. And it's very easy to use, very simple in um, looks. So on the top, you have your heading. And on the left, this is where you're going to add all of your content. Now you can see up in the top, it says prototype, because this is just the beginning of this creation tool. And you might see it make lots of changes over the next couple of months or years. So I'm going to change this to say World War II timeline because I know that there are lots of interesting events um, that occurred during World War II. So we're going to go ahead and click Add Event. And we want to go ahead and add a title. So we would say World War II Begins. And we need to go ahead and write the date. We can give a description if we want. Um, I don't have any more information on that at this moment, but I might click up here and say choose an image. And when I choose it, it's simply going to search for a photo. I can click enter. I think I'll use this image. And so it's going to add this small image to your timeline. Okay, so now on the left hand side, I need to click save. So I can go ahead and add my next event. So I'll go ahead and add And the date. And I can choose an image. Again, I like this one right here. And click Save. And I'm going to go ahead and do this for a number of other items. Go ahead and click Add Event until my timeline is complete. So I'm going to do that now in a little bit of time lapse. Okay, now that we have most of our content in our timeline here, we may want to go back and make some changes. As you can see, all of my information is not consistent. You ha I have my dates written in different ways, and some of them are too large so that you can't see all the information. So I want to go back and do some edits. So first, I can go to any one of these items on the timeline. And if you look, here is the date. I can change the format of the date and I can move them up or down if they are in the wrong order. And I can click here to edit it. So I'm going to go back in. And I'm going to change this to September 1939. And then maybe go ahead and click Save. So I think I'm going to go back and I'm going to edit some of these dates so that they're all in a consistent format. So I just click on the pencil. And I'm going to take out the day and the comma and hit save. Same here. And it might not be as precise, but it might be better formatting for my screen. And just to mention, based on the information that your teacher is requiring for your project, once you go into a specific event, they might require you to give some more information about it. So even though it won't show up on the timeline itself, if you go ahead and enter the description right here in this uh, box on the left hand side, that when you hover over the top of that item, 
it will give you more information. And you'll see it's right here on the right hand side now underneath the event date and then the event and a small description. So I'm going to go back, edit, and save. And I think I have just one more. And so now you can see that it looks much better on my timeline. Okay, but we're not done yet. So once we've done that, there's a couple other things that we can do. When we click here on the design, we can decide if we really like the way this looks or feels, or we can click design. And even though there's not much to look at here, each one of these boxes will reformat your content to a different design so you can decide which one you like best. This is this canvas circle one, the one that is in the dark gray. And so I'm gonna click each and see what it might look like. That one's kind of neat. We get to see bigger pictures and it's divided left and right from top to bottom. This one adds some color. I really like the purple. This says canvas blue. There's not much information in this timeline. Hmm, but this one is very artistic. So depending on which one you like, I think I really like this one for now. As soon as we are done, we can click right up here to where it says sign in to download. So if we sign in on the account that we already have, that your teacher has provided you with, or your own individual account, you simply click the download button, and you'll see that my new file is going to go right down here on the left-hand side of my downloads list on my toolbar. Now, you probably know a number of ways that you can share this with your teacher. Again, you can upload that to Microsoft Teams. You can upload that into a file and email it to your teacher to show her you've completed your assignment. Or you can bring that into something like um, Seesaw Activities and bring that in. And then on top of that, whether in Teams or Seesaw, you may want to consider even adding an audio component where you can hit the microphone and record yourself explaining all of these events leading up to World War II and through the surrender of Japan in September of 1945 to really demonstrate everything you learned during that unit. I hope this will be helpful to you. Have a great day.